so yeah, I think the fanatic thing is something I never really had in me, you know? I'm just kind of like, I try to be a realist, and um, So you get that, you would understand that if someone said to you, they'd, they'd be a little leery at dealing with someone like that as opposed to a guy like you who was not a fanatic. Well, I think I'm, well, I don't really call anyone a fanatic. I just, uh, I think I'm, I've had the privilege of, and it is a privilege, but I've had the privilege of living in a lot of different situations, you know? Whether it's a rich American neighborhood or a poor American neighborhood or a neighborhood in Africa, but you're in this American building or, I mean, you know, like I've seen a, a bunch of different things and it's a privilege, you know, it calms you down and you become like kind of a rational person, I guess, about stuff and just kind of chill out. Have you gotten a chance to actually go to Jamaica and and experience anything of the culture there? No, nah, I've never been to Jamaica. We always kind of figured that there'd be like the right time to go, you know? And it's never really felt like, oh, we should go to Jamaica, you know? But it's funny, I mean, our sound man is, is Jamaican and he's, he's the front of house guy. He used to be for Luciano, Where There Is Life tour. Anthony B, So Much Things To Say tour. Sizzla, Crazy Ja, and Black Woman and Child tour. Just like the greatest albums of the late 90s that we all like loved so much. Yeah, like listening to in high school and stuff. But yeah, no, we know we know plenty of Jamaicans and we do tracks with Jamaicans and we try to, you know, get songs on the Jamaican radio and we, you know, but we, uh, we've never been, no, no. It'll come someday. I've been in the grill. I'm sure one of these days you're going to be doing a whole bunch, a big multi-night yeah. run down there. I want to go get on um, Rebel Salute, the, the concert that Tony Rebel does every year. I think that's our kind of our goal is to hop on that and see what happens. That's cool. You got a goal. You got a whole mission in store for that. I dig that for sure. Are there other island communities? Because I, I get the, the privilege myself of talking with a wide variety of artists and many people who are reggae artists. And one thing that comes up over and over again is like island communities around the world embrace reggae. It's not necessarily a Jamaican thing so much as a. it's also an island thing. Are there other island places that you can, now that I've said that, that you can say, yeah, we actually have been here or here and we noticed what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I have a, a theory on why it's like that. I think that islands are really fought over by imperial countries, at least they were a couple hundred years ago. A um, little more recently than that in some cases, including this one. But uh, islands are kind of like a prize, man. And people treat them like that. You know, they show up in the boats and they, they, they steal them. Um, so I think like Jamaicans kind of, hit the nail on the head perfectly of what an island song is. You know, it's, hey, A, we're in paradise and this is perfect, but B, you know, this, this asshole stole my land from me. And it's kind of a similar story. I mean, there's not many islands that don't have that story, you know? So it's like people, sure, it's the good vibes, but it's also like, you know, I would feel the same way. So makes sense to me. That's a fantastic, uh, so you're saying historically many island places. People come steal them and exploit them and make tons of money off of them and, and run people around and divert the water sources and change the climate and, and bring all their own plants and animals and kill all the plants and animals that were here. And it's like making a king's dominion, you know, like a big ass king's dominion. But it's still like the culture prevails somehow, you know, you can still feel the real Hawaii under the concrete and like see it in the people's eyes. So that's why I always thought they liked reggae. Yeah, man, we don't like our invasive species, that's for sure. We got these little frogs, the coqui frogs. You ever heard Rico, those? Man. Yeah, those are from Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, when you talk about personal heroes, you mentioned a couple people before. Who would you hold dearest in your life as, you know, at this point, a little bit older, maybe, like you mentioned, you, you've been doing this for a while. You've had like 10 years of, of professional work doing this. The people who have made the cut after that period of time would be? Um, like music-wise? They could be both, because you're a soulful con man of conscious, obviously. I don't want to restrict you to music. I don't think that would be right. <laughs> I mean, well, we, we started, uh, I mean, our families have all supported us since we were children. So, and not one of our families doesn't support us, which is kind of crazy, because normally you hear about how the families like didn't support the kids. All our families supported us. Um, but Jim Fox, uh, who's done all the Israel Vibration records and some of the Burning Spear and a lot of the Peter Broggs and just tons of Don Carlos and just everything. He gave us a chance when we were little kids and we were 18 and he let us record at his studio for mad cheap. That was awesome. Um, 
Derek Parker, a guy who we used to steal his posters when he would throw reggae shows in DC. Uh, and he caught us one day. Uh, he ended up becoming our sound man for like 10 years. Um, and just everybody around the area, man, all the bands we used to play with back in the day, like Jaw Works and like, uh, I mean, the bands we used to watch growing up, like the Black Sheep and, and Third Eye. And DC used to be a really reggae, reggae, reggae type of spot. You know, it had its own neighborhood. This 14th and U is like where we grew up playing. And I mean, it was like, it was legit. There's too many people to name out, but DC, like, and all those, all those people, much like DC, are probably still there, like, you know, in the same spot, you can still find them. Yeah, they kind of like grow there, like a, like yeah, a yeah. fungus, if you will. Um, yeah, as we wrap it up with you, a couple things on the record that really made me um, surprised, but in, in a, uh, don't be alarmed, that's our fireworks going off out there. Uh, we have, on the record, I see a deluxe package that will include, for Strength to Survive, um, the Green World Project, and you guys teaming up for tree seedlings. You know what? That wasn't even my idea. I normally come up with a lot of this stuff, but that was not my idea. Very hip one. I really like the idea. It's super cool. Um, our our message is in that is kind of to like, that's just that's just a drop in the bucket, you know. But it's a start. It's a super cool start. There's Planting a, a live tree, my brother. Yeah, there's a phrase that I put inside the the tree. It's like on the packaging that they get. It's not packaging, but it's a little card. It's like a, like a, what do they call it? Um, bookmark. And it says a year from now, you'll wish you started today. But like, that's kind of like what that tree is. It's like, it's just a drop in the bucket, but it's still like, it's a start. And a year from now, you'll wish that you started this thing that you want to do today. So yeah, it's kind of more of like a, a metaphor then for so many things in life that if you get started now you, you got two hands you got two feet you got a brain you got eyes you got a mouth you can talk you can whatever you got like skills you get at you can kind of do whatever you want in this world and that's how it's set up so here's this tiny little tree and you know maybe you can make it grow and then maybe you'll see think you can do something else but it's a great metaphor though for so many things uh, if you start that change now and making little bits of progress a year from now there will be so much evidence of yeah, it Yeah, and you're gonna be like the happiest person ever right. yeah right for having taken taken the time to yeah. doing that in just one year's time it you you give yourself the greatest gift of ever you know you give yourself the the, the meaning of life yeah, man. No, I think it's super cool. I was like, wow, what a cool thing to throw in the deluxe package, throwing in the tree seedlings. That is very green, my brother. Has anyone else brought that up in your interview tour, by the way? Has that been a big... I haven't heard one comment about the uh, tiny little tree, but that's cool, though. I dig it. Yeah, well, it made an impression on me, and as did this other one, another plug for the record. And, and these are the good kind of plugs. It really makes it make you uh, think twice about the value of, of supporting a product like this. The World Food Program, some proceeds from the record are going to be helping them. And we sort of have dabbled in that subject of looking out for one's brother. Um, what enabled that to be part of it? And even if it's just some portion, I think that there's something to be said for that. Sure, sure. Um, we don't really find it our role to tell people to go donate money to poor people. That's not my job to tell you that, and that's not your job to do that. You know, It all depends on mentality. but. I've sometimes gotten a big amount of money and thought to myself, what am I doing with this? This is crazy. Somebody just gave me this huge amount of money for doing something I love. Something about it doesn't feel right. And I called my dad. I was like, dad, what's the deal? Something's wrong. And he was like, look, man, whenever I felt like that in life, I would do some research, find the best you know, project that I believed in that, that gave people a chance who otherwise didn't have a chance. And you can sit around and say, oh, poor people. You go get a job but it's not really like that everywhere you know yeah America you can kind of get off saying that even though almost everybody here is unemployed now but like these countries they don't they don't have a shot you know and it's and it's wow those fireworks are really impressive. that's why I was concerned about it's my guest I wanted to reassure him that it. <laughs> it just ended Jake <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he was excited for the fireworks they were very good Okay, but no, like I was saying, the, um, the, we're not really, we're not going to sit here and tell everybody to, uh, what to do. I'm not going to tell you how to wear your hair. I'm not going to tell you what shoes will, you know, be the, that's up to everybody. 
Um, but we, if we choose to donate some of our money to a cause that we believe in, we can do that. And if we end up leading by example for a couple people, because it's not like I'm trying to get you to join the church or I'm trying to, you know, I'm not doing anything. We like, I'm not sneaking around the corner here. I'm just saying, not that churches sneak around the corner. It's the tree seedling church. There's no church involved, man. I just, we, we like, we feel good when we give to people who are in crazy amounts of need. It feels really good. So we do it when we, when we, you know, sell the record. And a lot of people have come up to us like you right now. And you're like, that's pretty cool. And I like the tree. And I'm like, hey, see, everybody likes it. It's just like what I said about the beach. You don't want to start a war. You don't want to rip down a tree. You don't want to, you know, watch some kids starve in the gutter. But since it's kept away from your view and away from your eyes and, and it's, everything's shut off in its perfect corner of the world so I can remain this massive consumer dinosaur, you know, I don't feel bad about it. But if somebody would just talk about it, maybe everybody would feel kind of bad about it. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad, I'm just saying. Sometimes it doesn't seem fair to me. Your dad retired or is he still with the IMF? Uh, he, he put up quite a fight, but he retired. He, I didn't think he was ever going to retire. And then he taught for like six years after he retired, which was really funny because we all knew he wasn't going to retire. But yeah, he's done now. He must be very proud of you. He loves it. He's, a, he, he's probably my biggest fan. And he knows I talk a lot of shit. And he knows, you know, like my head and my mouth get all big and I just get crazy. But he, he always told me that was one of the cooler things uh, that we had going on is that we were so firmly rooted in what we believe. And... Uh, he digs that a lot about the band. Plus, he's a huge music fan, so he kind of gets what he wants, you know? Yeah, I bet he's solid. I'd love to meet him someday. Hey, uh, appreciate talking to you. Wishing you uh, a lot of luck with the, with the record and Thanks, stuff, sir. my brother. Seriously. Thank you. We're, uh, we're happy. We're thankful that everybody seems to like it so much, and we're right where we want to be, so thanks for saying that. Uh, you're welcome. Good luck. Yep. Aloha.